Hi everyone. Happy uh, Saturday. I'm always looking at this thinking, is it? I can't stand it when this thing is not quite level. <laughs> I think I need a bubble level. Don't they make video, you know, little video cameras with bubble levels in them? I'm not sure if that's right yet or not. Anyhow, I hope you're all doing well this Saturday. I just thought I'd check in, um, tell you what's been going on. Huh, interesting stuff has been going on. Um, not always pleasant, but interesting nonetheless. Um, the person for whom I had started working fired me after, uh, well, people say I shouldn't say fired. What happened was she misjudged something. She misjudged her needs when she hired me. And she said, after I worked for her for two and a half days, she realizes she needs somebody who can do all the work without her having to take much, if any, time explaining. And that is, understand all the software, understand the way she uses the software and her process, understand how she deals with her email. I mean, it was a, a little absurd, to say the least, and I was very upset at first, uh, and pissed. Mostly upset. My process is that I blame myself first, and, um, you know, think that I'm inadequate. <laughs> um, but then I realized she's just, I should have known better when I took the job, but anyhow. Uh, but what that has done is sort of um, opened up my thinking and my understanding of what my, situa my situation actually is. Well, I do need to get gainful employment. I need to get something going. Um, I'm not in a situation where it's a dire necessity today. I have time. And since I have time, and this realization only came up after she let me go, so it's kind of like, okay, that's what was supposed to happen. Um, I've been thinking more about my photography. I did take some pictures while I was there. And while I have generally approached my photographic work from an artistic sense, as in creating artwork. Um, I'm actually very good at it in other ways. Uh, so I'm going to work on, probably for the next few weeks, building up some professional portfolios and I'm thinking of doing photography for small businesses or service providers, um, those who make, you know, uh, even handmade um, product, who need product photography, possibly small event photography, nothing, nothing really big, more like small intimate events or people who want process photography for their business about what their process is. Because I, I did take some when I was working at the still room for a few days, and they're actually very good. And so I'm making a portfolio out of them. Uh, and I am going to, um, I have a friend who has a tea shop. And I'm going to go in and take pictures there. I'm, I'm basically going to make these portfolios and say these people are my clients, even though they're not really my clients, but they might be clients for trade. Um, so I'm going to work on that uh, in addition to, you know, keeping my eye out for whatever else is out there that might be suitable and feed my own. Um, creative spirit as well. So I had an interesting experience today. I uh, I have a woman <clears throat> that I know on Facebook who I went to a few years ago <clears throat> for Jinshin Jitsu, which is kind of an energy healing. She al she's also an herbalist. 
and she does uh, flower essences as well as tinctures. And I first found her because she wrote about uh, she wrote a thesis paper on <clears throat> her ancestry and her connection to Poland, which is my ancestry as well, and her connection to Baba Yaga. Um, so I found her through that, and then I went to her to uh, for her services. And just over the years, I've kept track of um, her through her website. And so I got a notice from her on Facebook earlier this week that they were going to be having an open house at her um, office space. And um, I guess there's another practitioner that's just coming on board there. There's a few of them that share the office. And um, this woman does um, dream work and energy work. And Atava, the woman that I know, also does, does dream work and has dream groups. So I asked Atava, well, can I come and take pictures? You know, I don't, you know, I'm not going to charge for these. And, you know, if you like some of them, we can do a trade. And she said, sure. She, she said that not many people might come and that maybe I would prefer to shoot if it's okay. Uh, she's doing a curanissima? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's another herbal class on Mondays. And she, they've got a few more classes and she said that might be a better one to shoot. So I may go back and do that for her. But in any case, the interesting thing about today was I really didn't do that much shooting. There were there was Atava and Katrina, which are the two practitioners. And there was one woman that came that was a friend of Katrina's. And there was another woman named Indigo, who was a friend of Atava's. And a couple things really struck me about the experience. One was that Katrina and Indigo, I, I swear to God, I have seen them before. And very, very strongly, yet I haven't. Neither of them remember me, and I, I was trying to come up with places where I may have seen them. Nothing. And I had a couple of instances during the time where it was like some of the strongest deja vu I've had in years. I really haven't been having much deja vu for a while, but this was like really strong. And as Katrina was describing her practice, which is a lot of energy work with people and trying to find blockages in energy and, and that sort of thing. She, uh, she asked for a volunteer. Does anybody want to have a short um, demonstration of how this works? So I volunteered and I told her that I was a hard nut to crack, that I, I haven't had good luck with that kind of practice before. And um, so she had me lay down, and she asked me, um, I, I talked about a blockage that I feel is for us finding my path, my creative path, and really expressing it. And she asked me where I felt it in my body, and I just said, my solar plexus. And as she was, um, you know, just getting a sense of, of my energy, she, I forget how she asked me about it, but she asked me about something, you know, and I don't know how it came up, but I came up with a story, and it's kind of personal, so I won't go into it, but it had something to do with childhood, and, and, and basically, we were trying to figure out a sort of, she got a sense of an armoring, or a belt, around my, my abdomen, my lower abdomen, and she didn't want to say it, but it, it felt like a chastity belt to her. And the experience from childhood that I came up with had, had something to do with my sexuality. It wasn't abuse or anything like that, but it was kind of a, a um, sense of either shame or confusion or something about that aspect. Um, so she wanted to do kind of like a past life thing with me which I'm not sure whether I believe in reincarnation or how I believe in it. Uh, I like the concept, but 
I don't know. So she she had me like imagine myself on a river. And this kind of imagining stuff doesn't usually work for me because I always feel like what I come up with is contrived based on what they're saying. But she said, just we're going to go back a few lives. We're just going to go back until you, you find something that you come up with. And I said, and so the, the, I had this image that came into my head of like this, this kind of ramshackle wood shed. And there was a man going into the shed. And that's all I, but it was, it was like, I don't know where it came from. It's not anything that I've seen. It, it, and it's even the image itself was more like something I felt. And she said, uh-huh. And she said, do you, do you know where you are? Well, I said, no, I'm just watching it at this point. And she said, well, you may not, you may not be able to go inside. And, wh and what she came up with from this past life was that my family was very poor. And, and the thing was, too, when uh, some of the things when she was talking to me, um, I, got these, I got like these chills, which was like really kind of freaky. I got chills because I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, my mind is really strong usually, so this stuff doesn't get through to me. Um, so anyhow, she said, your family was very poor, so basically my father in this lifetime prostituted me. And, um, and that is where this, this armoring in this lifetime has uh, come from. And she had me do this whole thing where everybody came out and came out of the shed and stood around and, and basically said that, you know, these are contracts and we were going to burn the contracts and everybody was going to throw the contracts into a fire. And so we went through this whole process and, and then she, she brought me back out. But I thought that was like really, really fascinating because I've always wondered about some physical issues that I have if they were in any way related to some sort of um, some sort of abuse but it was nothing that I could think back to at least in this lifetime so it was really kind of very interesting and then we were doing dream work later on and I was talking about a dream I had last night that was just really kind of weird and I actually got a lot of insight from that as well so it was, even though I didn't take many pictures I ended up with this experience of being with these these women who um, had a very grounded sense to them and we also did herbs later on too and uh, I don't know it was really good and it was really interesting um, and really kind of powerful and unusual for me and I'm not trying to I, I, actually what I mean to say is I'm trying to just allow it to be what it is without embellishing it too much, but at the same time allow it to be what it is and not discount it. So uh, the funny thing is now I've come back and I'm feeling like I have cramps and stuff, which is weird. Um, <laughs> Uh, so anyhow, so that was my day, uh, and hopefully I can go back and take more pictures of the herb class, Urban Dreams, I think, is what she's doing. And she's supposed to do, Otava's supposed to be doing a, a Slavic ancestor kind of worship, uh, worship, workshop, sorry, I'm kind of tired or something. Um, but it's just very interesting because I felt for a long time and my physician has said this and my, my acupuncturist when I talk to him there's there's some sort of block and you know obviously when we talk about blocks so much or I look at myself and think about blocks so much you know is I am I am I creating that block but this this is a sense that you know it is it is an internal sense that I have had for probably my whole adult life um, and I just kind of ignored it, you know, I ignored it for a long time, just saying, well, this is the way I am, but now I'm thinking, no, maybe not. So, anyhow, that was my day today. <laughs> it was really very interesting, and um, 
I just thought I'd pass that on. I mean, I don't, I don't always, you know, I don't know how to think about a lot of different, more esoteric and energy practices. Um, there is something in me that says, I'm sure they work for some people, but they'll never work for me. But that, that is my own um, kind of self-doubt, low self-esteem, low self-worth kind of tapes playing in my head. Oh yeah, that's the other thing, we talked about EFT. <laughs> EFT, which I actually did a little bit with Moon Mother the other day on Skype. Um, and so I'm getting this message about EFT to, to practice that more. So, I don't know, it's, it's a lot to take in. Um, and I'm working with opening up to new possibilities and um, not being afraid of the unknown and the uncertain because there's always unknowns and uncertainty. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm just really, really grateful for, you know, these, these people that have come into my life, whether it's through Flickr or YouTube or in this case, well, I first actually met Atava. Yeah. I might be having a little bit of glare there. Um, I first met Atava because of her thesis that was online, so there you go. Um, but also, you know, uh, the other thing I was going to say is also I, I have this desire to find my tribe, which I have, I do have it sort of, but I haven't really acknowledged that's what it is, and so I'm still, you know, working on that. Um, but just really grateful to have found, you know, and it's it's mostly women, not that there's anything wrong with guys, and I've got wonderful male friends who are like really supportive and have just influenced my life, especially artistically and, and even in other ways just tremendously. But right now in my life, especially when I'm going through this, this many, many transitions, not just one transition, there is, there is like everything's, it's like everything's getting cleared out of the way now. Every, you know, it's like, you know, everything's off the table and we're, we're going to start over again, which is like, wow. Um, but these women, you know, whether it's my Qigong group, uh, whether it's some of the people on YouTube, um, Annie, Mirth and Reverence, or Jackie, uh, uh, One Moon Mother, um, or these, these new women that I'm meeting now that have this wonderful energy. I mean, it's, they're all different. But it's all like different aspects of, of this female energy that I can pull from. Um, so anyway, I'm going to think more about my dreams. Um, I think I have some mugwort. I think I got some mugwort. I bought some mugwort not too long ago. I'm going to make a little sachet and put it under my pillow and just get some more insights through my dreams as well. Because I think that's, I underutilize that. Um, but anyway, that's what's going on this Saturday. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well and having a good weekend. And um, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.